Okay, welcome to lesson five on measurement bias and designing surveys. Um, I don't know what it is about this one. I, I've tried this video twice now, and I've got, got through the whole thing once, and and unfortunately it deleted, and I got through the whole thing again halfway, and it, it just froze. So let's hopefully we're luckier here. Uh, we'll try to do better anyway. So here's uh, three questions I want you to look at uh, to see what um, the problem with the question is. Uh, so you can just think about that. problem with the first one is we call it a loaded question. It's missing some um, choices that should be there. And so what you should do is like you could, it could be possible that there's only three big ones, but you still have to prove an other, uh, provide an other. And so and this is somewhat dated, but if you – what you would do is you'd list as many as you can, as many as you can think about, and then an other would be would be um, would be just to, to take care of the, any that you can't think of. Uh, this question: Running a business is hard. Should not be there. That's your own opinion. Uh, you don't want that there. Leadership training will help you run your business smoother. That's all you want to ask. You can't ask. Just agree. Agree a little. Somewhat agree. What? What's the difference? I have no idea what the difference between those two are, so that will be a, a bad question to ask. Um, and so it's just a flawed question. Um, this is what we call a leading question because we're leading them to say it a certain way. How important do you think speed and quality service are? Uh, apart from the fact that modestly important and little importance, is, it's hard to know what the difference is except that it seems like it's on a scale. Um, this is a two questions in one. If you speed and quality service are not the same thing, if you want to ask about them, you got to ask two questions. Learning target six is um, is designing survey questions so they're free of measurement bias. We're going to learn what that is. I incorporate questions into surveys that cl collect different types of data. You can create surveys with technology to efficiently collect primary data from a sample of the population. As so measurement bias, what it is, is there's some flaw in the measurement tool. Uh, so I love it. In my class, I've got this ruler that I just love for this for this lesson because um, it's it's the worst worst meter stick you've ever seen. It's got broken ends. There's no way it could ever measure anything. It's really only good. It's not really good for a straight line. Uh, it's really only good for um, turning the projector on and uh, pointing at stuff on the board. And so what we call it is it's a measurement bias because there's a flaw in the measuring technique. Even the dashes on it are too big. I think it's the nearest eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch. It can't measure accurately. Um, now, like we don't only measure with rulers and stopwatches. We also measure with um, with uh, surveys. So we just ask questions. Common example is a loaded question where where like the PlayStation one where it's some choices are over underrepresented, a leading question like the business one, leadership training, um, it's phrased in a way that could influence the way a person answers. You don't want to put that on there. Uh, just like sampling bias had a specific type of bias, which we call non-response bias, and you don't want to confuse this with non-response, measurement bias has a specific type called response bias. And response bias is any time where you have – it's not so much like a leading question, it's, but you're, re, you're influencing people to respond a certain way, uh, usually because it's not truly anonymous. Um, so maybe they're responding in a way to impress you, uh, responding in a way that they don't want to be embarrassed. So they're not responding um, honestly. Um, I, I could ask questions in my class and, and – um, I also have to ask with technology because it's not truly anonymous just not to put their name on it because I can read handwriting as well. So technology is the best way to do it. So some questions that we're looking at, how do you rate the career of legendary outfielder Joe DiMaggio? The word legendary is a leading word. What suggestions do you have for improving Tom's tomato juice? You probably want to have some options here. Um, so like like some of the things that are possible, we really just don't know what's possible out there. Um, and and how many of you really know anything about tomato juice? So the question can't be too specific. What's your age? Love this one. 40 plus might be okay. Like you might just be trying to weed out anyone over 40. Um, but 10 to 20 is a funny age range because age range because you're looking at 
children age 10, you're looking at teenagers, you're looking at uh, adults that are 18, 19, 20. Um, 10 and 10, like if you're 10, which one do you put? Like it's really hard to know. Why is zero an age that you're asking? Why are you interviewing? Why are you surveying people that are under the age of, of five, really? What type of vehicle do you own? This is a loaded question. Uh, van, there's only three choices. What if you order a motor, motorcycle or, um, or a houseboat? Um, like what type of vehicle do you own? And uh, do you know what a sedan is? Or are you just not answering that because it's not one of these two? Uh, what is your opinion of crazy Justin's auto repair? What's the difference between fantastic and incredible? That's a, that might be one thing you want to think. Why isn't crazy one of the opinions? Any of these questions are, are a little bit personal. Uh, it could turn people off, and they, they might spoil their ballot, and there's a spoil their spoil their survey, and there, there might be a lot of people that are that are get turned off. Uh, so you might want to leave these questions as optional. Or if you're going to leave them as optional, just don't ask them at all. You indicated you eat at Joe's fast food once every month, three months. Why don't you eat at Joe's more often? If you've never heard of it, why did you put the every three months? So there's only really two choices here. And um, so it's really just a, a loaded question uh, for those two choices. These might be okay. It's just then there's only two choices. If you've never heard of it, it's not an option. Fastest, most economical internet service. That's two questions in one. Right? Those are not the same thing. So writing surveys with Google Docs. Remember that like we worked hard to reduce the variability to get a good sample. If you worked hard, like you've got the people in front of you, ask the right questions that are free of measurement bias. We're gonna follow through this example from page 218. And I just want to show you. You can work on that one from page 218. I just want to show you what a form would look like in Google Docs. Um, so I've got this baseball survey form and it's pretty straightforward like when you're in Google Drive you can go to new and then go to more and create a new Google form uh, you can change your title you can change these questions you can make the multiple choice uh, it's really straightforward you can add a new question check out the advanced settings um, you, you can ask like do you like baseball you've got like a scale or a multiple choice um, <coughs> And so you can put like the different solutions that they have on there. And that was all that it asked you to do. Um, and when you go to view live form, what we get is uh, we get our survey. And you got to watch the theme of these things too, because the theme could actually um, entice people to answer a certain way. Like, do you think coffee is good for for school? Oh yeah, look, he's drinking coffee, he's going to school. Yeah, coffee's good. Um, this is about sports. If you show me, like, if you flash some football on there, maybe forget about boy baseball and just compare it to football, uh, you might think, like, oh, I'm just putting a sports theme with baseball in there, but football and hockey are much more exciting. So even me, like, my favorite sport is baseball, but um, uh, if I watch a hockey game, I, it's just, like, excitement overload because it's just, it's just too, uh, too fast, way too fast. Um, this is the... Uh, this is the, the URL. If we click it and hit Control C or just right click copy, um, we go to this website called goo.gl. Just type in goo.gl and it's a URL shortener. If we, if we paste in, like right click paste, um, we get shorten URL. We actually get a smaller thing that we can actually type into our phone uh, and carry around and ask questions with. Um, it's something that easier way to like actually have people type it in. Um, if they're just clicking on it from an email, it doesn't really matter, but it, it is a little bit nicer, a little bit smaller. When you get your survey results, um, you can just click on view responses here and it takes you to a page that looks something like this. And you get like a timestamp for when they filled it out. Um, and then you've got data that you can actually copy and paste and put into fathom. Like if we just copy it, um, and we open up Fathom. I'm uh, just going to open up Fathom really quickly here. Hoping that the, the computer doesn't freeze because I do not want to go through this again. It was before the long weekend. Um, 
and we, we bring in a collection. We can right click, uh, paste case. I didn't do this on the first one, so I feel like I gotta do something a little bit more. Um, paste them in there and you've got like, you've got, uh, the first one is actually bad for your delete case because that, that was the titles. Um, but then we can show a graph and I should have not had the titles in there. You can see like the number of people that dislike it or, or like it a lot, right? And so I can see there. Uh, I've got like a little, like a lot, like you got these categories here. So Fathom, you can do it pretty quickly, uh, just like that. Uh, Google Docs will actually do it for you as well. If you go to responses and go to summary of responses, it'll show you how many people liked it a little or liked it a lot. This is ordinal type data, so you can actually collect it and compare it. These are two categorical data, not saying male are better than female, female are better than male. Um, there's no ranking system here, but here's there's definitely a ranking system. So we can group, you know, seven people in this class real really dislike it a lot or or not like it. Um, okay, so that's a that's an example of a survey, and, and it, it's the most efficient way because um, your your um, uh, just your responses all get there get there faster, and, and and it's very easy to collect from the spreadsheet. Uh, right, right question on, so one thing you can do here, I encourage you to read these questions. I know they can get like kind of overwhelming, like if you're doing a lot, but I encourage you to read through them, think about how you would answer these. And then what you can do is like take the questions on slide five and rewrite them so they're free of bias. That's another good thing to practice.